put it this way, it kind of reminded me of like seven meets Vanilla Sky with a little bit of Machinist in there, but like a musical version. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back and hello if you are new. And speaking of new, um, I am in a brand new flat as you can probably tell because there's no pictures behind me which has basically been uh, present for like every single um, video for the last, I don't know, probably two years. Um, it's kind of one of the reasons that it, I'm a little bit late in putting this video together because we uh, moved into our very own um, flat. This is the first flat that we've ever been able to actually buy on shared ownership so it was a really really big deal um so it's been a bit of a whirlwind of a week um and with that in mind it's also been another whirlwind of a week for um album reviews of course so um as you guys probably know code oranges underneath was my album of the year for 2020 and three years later the band have returned with a record that is incredibly ambitious, really experimental and very, very interesting in all fronts. So without further ado, let's dive into Code Orange's brand new album, The Above. So if you're not familiar with Code Orange, the band kind of came from um, the beginnings of hardcore, but very quickly, I think, broke out of those restraints. But kept that sort of DIY, you know, very true to your roots kind of ethos. They slowly but surely been adding in elements of grunge and kind of alt rock in tracks like Bleeding in the Blur, um, Underneath and The Easy Way. First off though, I think it's really important to note that this is not Underneath 2.0. This is a direct reaction against what we saw in Underneath, which honestly I think is the best way they could have approached the next record. Underneath was a very murky and quite unsettling look into, um, you know, that sort of world. The above uses the idea of brightness and light, and the way that it does this is kind of like in, you know, chorus sections or guitar melodies, vocal melodies, but there's something not quite right about it, and that's what I love about this album, is it's just, there's something you can't really put your finger on, but it's just not right. It's kind of like there's this sort of fractured feel to it and there's definitely more than meets the eye. And, you know, the Code Orange almost allow a little bit of this like positivity and light to kind of seep in before it's snuffed out. The above plays out in a very much kind of like conceptual idea. And I think it will sideline some fans in the fact that it is very experimental, but maybe not in the sort of, you know, the viciousness that we saw in underneath, but more in the idea of melodies. But overall, the record is incredibly ambitious. There's strings, there's choirs, there's, you know, different melodies in terms of guitar, vocal melodies. There are so many moments that play to the band's strengths, like um, Take Shape, which features Billy Corgan of Smashing Pumpkins. Tommy Simpson, smiling politely. Thematically, I think this album looks at sort of, you know, the perceived realities and looking in at oneself, you know, quite introspectively, but questioning your own identity and the world around you. There's metaphors of the mask of sanity, you know, the idea of looking at free will. And then on Snapshot, there's this kind of like, you know, it sounds like someone walking up to a door and closing it. And for some reason, it just gave me this sort of like thriller kind of vibe. Put it this way, it kind of reminded me of like seven meets Vanilla Sky with a little bit of Machinist in there, but like a musical version. <laughs> Singing definitely takes a lot more prominence on this record. And as we saw on Take Shape, you know, that's a big, big song. It has Billy Corgan in it, which is really cool. But I think if anything, this is pushing Reba into the kind of spotlight even more. Best performance she's ever given is easily in Snapshot. You know, her vocal range has kind of come on leaps and bounds. And then you've got um, Splinter the Soul, which I think is really, really cool. And then quite a sort of um, vulnerable sort of style on Mirror as well. I also think it highlights Jamie and Reba's uh, chemistry when they duet. And on I Fly, you know, there's, um, it, it's an interesting combination because you've got the first verse, which is Reba, and then you've got the second verse, which is Jamie, but the choruses, they kind of come together. 
And I like that sort of duality, you know, it adds different contrast, but also sees how well these two kind of mesh together when they do need to. And what I really massively respect about this band is they throw themselves entirely into whatever theme it is that this record is. The branding, the design, the imagery, everything is incredibly cohesive to make sure that it suits whatever this message is about in this album. It's also the first album to be self-produced by the band. Um, it was produced by Jamie and Shade with engineering by Steve Albini, who, as I'm sure a lot of you will know, is a legendary producer in his own right. I also think that sequencing is very, very important. You know, I think I kind of mentioned this on the last album. It's the idea of the unpredictability. And I think the way that each song is kind of put together in terms of, you know, what comes before it, what comes after it really adds to that sense of what the fuck am I going to hear when I put the Code Orange album on? You've got the Mask of Sanity slips and then it's kind of, you know, this palette cleanser that is Mirror. But then you've got this kind of sickly sweet melody that was taken from Mirror and warped for the next track, which is a drone opting out of the hive. And, you know, then we go into But A Dream um, a bit later on in the record, which leads us into the final track, which is The Above, which is a massive crescendo. It brings back that melody that we first heard on the Mask of Sanity Slips, but it sounds bigger. It's got choruses, it's got choirs, it's got strings, everything that you would kind of want for this big climactic grand finale. I might personally still prefer the vicious nature of Underneath, but you cannot deny that The Above is one of the most experimental and forward-thinking records that is released this year. Code Orange have remained as enigmatic as ever, but in doing so with The Above, I think, you know, they've opened up a sound which has a lot more opportunity and a lot more room to play, whilst also inviting a hell of a lot of new fans. So it's really a resounding, solid effort. So for that reason, I'm going to give this album a 9 out of 10. So thank you ever so much for watching my album review. It feels so weird, like, not having the, the, the paintings here. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It really, really helps. And um, I hope you guys are enjoying the album now that it's out as well. Let me know what you think of the video and the record in the comments. And I'll see you guys very, very soon, probably with more decorated walls <laughs> for another album review. All right, take care, my friends.